today's morning power of call. This is number 126. Guys, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, so we've done 126 of these so far. We've got you know an infinite number in the future. So I'm, 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 it's fun to pause every so often and realize how many of these we've done, how many topics we've covered, how many wonderful experiences we've been able to share through this. And, and I say share, I mean, obviously I'm speaking to you guys. I can read your chats. And it's, it's kind of uh, it's kind of an interactive experience, but it's been fun to, to talk about things and see you guys talk about them in the chats or, you know, you guys mentioned something and then I, it inspires me to come turn up on one of these calls and give a daily lesson around it, pump you guys up around a specific issue that you guys are running into or change some important beliefs. It's been an interactive process, all, all 126 episodes of these. And I'm excited to keep doing this, right? It's, it's a lot of fun. If this is your first morning power call, welcome. I do these every day, quick 10, 15 minute lesson, quick 10, 15 minute idea that I think is going to be very helpful for you based on what I see inside the chest to help you rapidly progress towards that financial freedom that you join this course to, to make happen in your life. And today's going to be one of those days. And usually I, talk, I cover some announcements at the very beginning. So a few announcements for you guys before we dive into the content. Number one, uh, I've added a daily checklist channel to the general section. It shows the daily checklist you should be doing if you're inside of the boot camp. And then it also shows the daily checklist you should be doing each day if you're inside of a Legion. And that's a base checklist for the Legion one. Your Legion commander might have some, th some extra things, some different things, but there's a base one. And that way you guys can always quickly, easily reference your daily checklist. You can always know what you should be doing every single day. So I've added that in there. And then today we have a live copy review call. Uh, in a few minutes after this call, I'm going to... Uh, select the five lucky winners. I've, I've got a giant Google form where you can submit your copy. Um, and you can then go inside and check to make sure, or not that, sorry, you can you can submit your copy. And I go inside, make sure you got all your information in there. And then if, and I use a random number generator, so randomly select five every single week. And then those five, I bring them onto a live video call with everyone else on the campus there. And I break down the copy. I look at the things they can prove. I teach them some important lessons. Um, it's a valuable call. It's a good chance for you to see how I review copy and for you to then turn around and use that same filter on your own copy and the other copy that you're reviewing inside of campus. So excited to have you guys on that call later today. It's at 1 p.m. PST. Yes, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you can make it, we'd love to have you. I'll drop the replay inside of the resources channel like I always do so you guys can go back and watch it if you're asleep. It's the dead of night wherever you live. So that is... The, pretty much the sum of the announcements. I'll be dropping another AI video again later today. I've been doing that for the next five to six days at the very least. I've, prob I've probably got a week of content I can continue to add in there. So we've got all that coming for you guys. So today I want to talk with you guys about distraction. Last night, as I finished up answering all the questions inside of the Ask Andrew, any, uh, Ask Andrew, the Professor Andrew channel, uh, I ran over to the Mindset channel, tagged a few students and said, hey, what issues have you guys are you guys running into when it comes to your time management? getting the work done, um, avoiding distraction. Like what issues are you running into? What's been difficult? I got some answers. I asked them how they had been applying some of the time management stuff that I taught inside of the boot camp. And got some answers back and forth and it became pretty apparent that there's a lot of issues that a lot of students are having when it comes to actually applying that. You know, it's one thing for me to give you some information and then send you on your way. And it's another thing to really stay with you guys and help you make sure that you develop these new habits when it comes to managing your time. And there's a bunch of things. I'm probably going to cover a lot of those in our daily power-up calls over the next couple of days, actually. Like, there's a lot of good conversation, a lot of good discussion. But there was, a, there was one common theme among, I think, like almost 50 or 60% of the messages that I saw. And that was, you guys get working, you sit down, you start working, and then, you know, maybe you have a lot of energy at the beginning, but pretty soon it peters out and you, you lose your energy and it's easy for you to get distracted. That, you know, the phone, the phone calls you, uh, other things in your life call you. And it's easy to slip away from doing the work you should do into low value distraction, YouTube, whatever it is, right? Um, that type of things. And, and I realized that was a huge, huge problem for a lot of you inside of the channel, which it's something I address in the time management video, but it's, I want to hammer home some of those ideas. And, and based on some of your feedback, I've, I've got some, some new things I want to bring for you, some new perspectives when it comes to managing your time in a way that helps you avoid distraction because distraction is, is the sneaky little thing that will derail you. You can have good intentions, good plans. Um, but if you allow distraction to pull you away, it will absolutely keep you from being successful, right? There have been so many world leaders who have reached the top and then get pulled away by distractions and they, they never were able to achieve even greater things, right? 
And this happens at every stage, from the very, very bottom of society to the very, very top of society. Distraction is a problem. And it's something you have to learn how to manage if you want to achieve anything great in life. Some people will just give up and they surrender to distraction. And they have fun, little dopamine-filled lives where they don't really get what they actually truly want. So I'm going to take some time and I'm going to talk with you guys about how to eliminate and control distractions in your life so that you can achieve at the highest level. It's pretty helpful information. I'm going to double, triple check. Everything is good in the chats real quick. Make sure that anyone, see if there's any unique questions. No, it looks like everyone's good. All right, I'm going to launch into this. And it's, it's going to turn into a mini training. This is going to be a nice little mini training on today's morning power-up call on how to avoid distractions. So the very first thing that you need to do if you want to eliminate distractions is you need to change your environment. If you have sat in a certain chair all of your life and played video games in that certain chair, if you've sat at a certain place in your world and that's where you've watched all your YouTube videos or streamed, sat on your phone for so much of your life and you sit down in that spot, chances are you're going to feel the urge to do those same things over and over again. It's how humans are, right? Um, you go into the gym, you really want to train. Uh, if you listen to that certain song, it might trigger hurt certain feelings. That's how humans work. Certain things trigger certain things for us. And if you sit down in the same exact place at the same exact device, and you, you try and do work there, it makes it really, really difficult. It's like why, why people that try and work in bed have such a hard time to sit down to work in bed and then they can't fall asleep or they, they fall asleep. Or, you know, maybe they work a little bit and they put their laptop away and then they try and fall asleep and they can't because now it's the place that they work. You need to control your environment and realize your environment has a huge impact. You can consciously overcome that. You can consciously do things to ignore your environment. And, and just ignore those things, but it takes extra energy to do so. It's better if you can, can control your environment and remove those distractions so they're not really a problem. And when I say remove those distractions, I mean, I mean change your environment so you don't feel like you need to be distracted. Now, there's a couple ways to do this, right? Obviously, if you could physically move to a new town, that would be the best way, right? That's usually one of the fastest ways to reset everything in your life. It's not really an option for you guys. Um, but if you can change your environment in little ways this can often help if you rearrange your workspace you know put your desk on a different wall or sit down in a different place or change where you work that's one way to really kind of reset everything um, you can change things on your device right you can change your background you can change the way things are laid out you can change the style of different things that's a huge thing you can do uh, a powerful thing you can do on your phone right is to change what you see on the home screen my home screen only has the apps i use for work so when I open up my phone, there's no distractions right there that pop up in my eyes. It's just the things that I used to work, right? So, and it's like four apps. That's all I see on my home screen. I have the other apps in the back if I need to. Um, but the apps I really, really need, that's all I see when I open my phone. Um, if you have distractions, if, you, if your work environment is messy, or there's a lot of different things going on, that is another really important thing. You need to clean that out. You need to get rid of those things so you can have a clear mind. These little things that exist inside of your world all around you, they draw your attention. They draw part of your attention. So those are a few things I recommend you do. And the other big thing, and this is when it comes to the environment, and I've talked about this before, you need to have the discipline to put your phone in a different room, right? Your phone, for most of us, the phone is a cheap distraction. All of the distractions come through this little device, right? You want to put that device in another entire room. If it's in a different room, it won't bug, be part of your consciousness, right? It won't be pulling you the same way that if it is sitting here on top of your desk, part of your brain always know that, knows that it's there. It's important that you remove that from your world if it's a problem. And nine times out of 10, it is a problem. I put my phone away in a different room or in a drawer or somewhere else while I'm working. I don't let it stay right there on my desk because that causes lots and lots of problems. I've, in my life, I've felt the distraction of my phone many, many times and I've learned that. So I put it away. If I ever feel any kind of distraction from my phone, it's in a different room. So have the discipline to do that. Realize it's going to make it a little bit harder for you to reach your phone and dive into the the experiences that would distract you from the work you need to do. So um, that's going to be an important part because if your environment is set to where you just sit there and all you do is work, it's going to be a lot easier to stay there and work. Even when it gets boring, you'll be like, I'm here in the place where I do work, right? And that's a big problem, right? A lot of you guys get doing the work and it gets boring. And because your environment is set to where there's easy distractions all around, your body will go, oh, I'm bored. I'm just going to get distracted and have some, have some fun, get a quick dopamine, dopamine hit over here. Fix your environment, fix your life. I check the chat super quick. Make sure everyone is. See if there's any new questions about this. No. So some people ask you to go like to a cafe. I've gone to cafes. I work in cafes quite a bit. Uh, even though it's a semi-distracting environment, if I put my headphones in, 
sit at the table in the back and work. It's just a new place where I can get away and, and focus on new ideas. So you can definitely go work in a cafe. That's an option. If you live at home and there's like crazy things happening, like people are loud and stuff. It's sometimes really, really good to go to a cafe where you can get away from all of that. Libraries are really good. Um, universities are good. I go work in universities every so often, maybe once or twice a year. I go sit in a university library and just work there. Um, so there's lots of places you can go to, to get away and be in a new environment where it allows you to work. And sometimes it's worth it. If you can't control your environment where you are or you need to control it super extra, going somewhere else, working somewhere else is a good thing. Hotel lobbies are sometimes good as well. There's different places you can go to work that can give you that feeling of new environment and you can now associate that place with working. I can be the place you go to work. Very, very good thing to do, but control the little things in your life, control the phone, control the computer, control the things. If you have apps that you know are distractions for you, video games, social media, um, things like that, that really don't provide any true value in your life. They're just distractions. They're just fun. I highly recommend you remove them from your phone and from your device. Uninstall. Make it to where there's friction to get to that thing. And it will make it to where it distracts you much less because it's just gone. It's just hard to get to. There's, there's more. You have to put in a lot of effort to get there. These companies make it extremely easy for you to access their stuff and get hooked on it. That's what it's designed to do. They, they literally, I, I remember there was a guy a while back. I can't remember if he was from Google or Facebook, but he came out after he was working there. And he's like, hey, they hired me to make this addictive like gambling. And that was what he did. Like That was his entire profession was making it as, as addictive as possible, like a casino. Um, so you have to realize that they are actively, and they're some of the best people in the world at capturing your attention. They've spent millions and millions and billions of dollars trying to do so. So sometimes it's better just to not play the game, just uninstall it, right? So my phone has no games on it. It has barely any social media. Social media is on the back page. And I'm going to tell you about how I implement social media in my life to keep it from being a massive distraction. So, um, those are some things you can do to control your environment. Now, outside of controlling your environment, like that's going to give you a big bump, but it's not going to remove everything. Things are still going to get difficult. Your mind's still going to be empty. Things are going to pull you different ways. There's another tool that you can use to massively increase your productivity. And I'm going to talk about music on this one. I've already talked about that before, how to use binaural beats and stuff like that. This is much better. Most of you have gone through some level of schooling in your life. You've taken tests, you've done quizzes, you've done projects. Um, and you've probably discovered that it's hard to focus on something unless the deadline is really close. Like if you, they give you a project to do and the deadline's a month from there, you don't really work on it now. But once you feel the time pressure, once you get close to the deadline, that's when your, your mind goes, oh no, I better get to work. I better do this work that I need to do. And you're able to focus insanely well on that particular topic. It's harder to focus when the deadline's far away, but when the deadline's close, it's easier to focus. And this is an illustration of something called Parkinson's, it's Parkinson's law, Parkinson's law. And that is that a task will expand to fill whatever time allotment it has, right? So if you give yourself a day to do something, it'll take you all day. If you give yourself 15 minutes to do something, you can probably get it done in 15 minutes, surprisingly, right? If you have an undefined time when you want to do it, when you just want to do it someday, it'll probably never get done, right? So with your work, with your daily checklist, if you give yourself specific deadlines in which you need to complete that work, if you block off time on your calendar and say, I need to finish this task and this time, and if it's a slightly high pressure deadline, obviously make give yourself enough time to be able to get it done, right? But if you can, um, if you can make it just enough to where you feel the pressure of the deadline, and humans are like this, we feel pressure when it comes to deadlines, that will help you in the moment focus and work significantly harder, right? If it's just open-ended, your brain can feel like it has the freedom to float, but if you bring the deadline in, it makes your brain focus. It makes it to where that time, you have to use that time. I like to use sand timers, right? So I have these little sand timers on my desk and I will use them for certain tasks, right? I used this five minute one the other day. I was doing, I was planning a creativity, um, some a creativity training I did with the Eagle Legion, which I'll release to everyone in a couple of days. I want them to have a few days with it uh, as sort of their reward for winning one of the previous Legion command uh, challenges. But I sat down and I had an outline of what I needed to write out for the PDF document. And I wanted to give myself a deadline. So every, so there's four tips for maximum creativity in this thing. And every four, I would set the timer at five minutes. I would force myself to write that entire section in five minutes. So it forced me to just flow. My brain just started dumping out ideas because I had to finish it before the time, ran out in the sand timer. It worked really well. I was able to get the stuff done really well. I think the quality was, it was fun. It was a little more whimsical than normal, but it was a, enough of a flow in there that I was able to get my best ideas out in a, in a compelling way as quickly as possible. 
was able to produce something that was really, really valuable for the Eagle Legion and will be valuable for the rest of the, the, the entire program. And I was able to do it in a really, really efficient time because I set a really fast-paced deadline. I did it on the micro level. Playing beat the clock is one of the fastest ways to be able to get your work done in a way that um, that keeps you free from distraction. Because if distraction comes in, but you're like, dude, I've got five minutes. That's all I have. Your brain knows that when it's go time, it's go time. It will focus much better. So setting deadlines is one of the most it's one of the most underrated ways that you can avoid distractions. It gives you power over distractions. Distractions fade away when it's time to play. Here's another idea, another thing that you can do to make sure that distractions don't come in and destroy you. And this is a, this is a tricky one, but you can set a time to allow yourself to be distracted. Let me explain. If you know that after you perform your day's work, you will take 15, 20, 30 minutes to relax, right? And you say, oh, I'm going to do my work. I'm going to hit my deadlines all like this until I'm done with my, my work. I'll fetch my daily checklist. And then after that, I'll give myself 30 minutes, 45 minutes to sit on my phone and do whatever I want. That way, when you're sitting there working and the temptation comes, the distraction comes to go on your phone, you'd be like, no, dude, I can just do my work. I'll, I'll, I'm going to do that later. I have the time set aside later to allow my brain to sit back and get the dopamine, right? And that might work for some people. Um, I don't really need that for myself, but I know a lot of people that do that. They set aside that time. It's like a reward. They only let themselves do that if they finish their work. And if they finish their work, then they say, you know what? Cool. Sit back, relax, enjoy 15, 20, 30 minutes. And it gives them an edge while they're working. It gives them a competitive edge because now they know that any distraction that comes in, they can just say, yeah, I'm going to procrastinate and join that until, you know, the end of the day when I finish my work and then I'm going to have as much time as I possibly want. So I'm not starved for it now. That's another powerful way to help avoid distractions. You say, Hey, I get my work done. And then I'm gonna go spend my time with my friend who's calling me and texting me like, sure, whatever. Like I can ignore him until now, but I'm going to definitely go talk with him on this time. That way you don't feel like you're completely robbing yourself of these desires that you have, but you're controlling them. You're putting them in a place where they don't interfere with your work and they turn into almost the reward for the work that you do. That's a helpful way to help you control distractions. Again, this one doesn't eliminate distractions, but it robs them of the power in the moment when you're trying to get the work done. Because now you can just say, oh, I'll do that later. Now, the, the biggest way you can control distractions is when you start to live with defined purpose. I talked about this yesterday. I'm probably going to talk about this quite a few times. In, in our journey together, as we continue to talk about ideas and I help you move towards financial freedom, Setting a clear, defined purpose for every second of the day is one of the most powerful ways to regain control of your life and have control over the distractions that come to you, right? I have my, my day blocked off. I have clear intention for every moment of every day. If I find myself without a clear intention, I immediately set one. Okay, okay. in the next five minutes, I want to achieve X. And sometimes the clear intention is, in the next five minutes, I want to create a wonderful memory with my sons, right? It doesn't have to always be about work, but I make sure that my time and my effort, my energy always has a clear intention. Sometimes it's, I'm going to spend the next 15 minutes on this walk. I'm going to shut my brain off. I'm going to ignore distractions. And I'm just going to let creative ideas bubble up to the surface, right? But there's always a boundary. There's always an intention. Whenever that's the case, whenever you have a strong purpose, a strong defined intention, it's much harder for outside forces to drag you away. It's much harder for the call to the phone to even matter anymore because you have a clear defined purpose, right? If you have that clear defined purpose on a specific amount of time, that helps me a lot. So every day, and I tell you guys that this inside of the time management bonus material, and this is something I have done religiously for at least 10 years of my life. Every night before I go to bed, I don't allow myself to sleep until I have set a clear intention for the next day where I've let, let, put out a list of things I need to do when I'm going to do those and set that clear intention. I do that every single day and I've done it every single day for the last decade, roughly, even more. Yeah, a little over a decade now. I've done a list like that every night. I sit down and plan the next day and I set a clear intention. And it's allowed me to maximize my productivity and avoid the little distractions that pop up. So to summarize, there's a lot of things you can do to, to eliminate distractions. You can control your environment. You can set clear deadlines. You can set up a time in your life that you allow yourself to be distracted as a reward for the work that you've done. And you can make sure that every second of every day has a clear intention and you live with defined purpose. Those four things are probably the best things you can possibly do if you want to avoid distractions coming in and wrecking your progress. Now, it's not going to make all of your work extremely fun. It's not going to take all the difficulty out of it. 
who will give you power and control to decide how you're going to use your time and use it in a way that's most productive to help you achieve bigger and better things in your life. My friends, it's been a good call. This has been a mini training. Uh, this will probably get clipped up and thrown as a resource inside of the, the channel, in addition to just being a replay of one of the million, like the million now morning power up calls that I've done. Um, but I hope this has been helpful for you guys. Um, share this with your friends inside of the Legion. Share this with, like, with those who weren't able to make it. Make sure that they get to watch this because this is going to give you a lot of power over your time and energy. And if you invest your time and energy correctly, there's no way that you can lose. You have to win at that stage. So it's been a good call. I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow. Let's take this. Let's take this time. Let's take this energy. Let's go out and take some money. I will talk to you guys tomorrow.